Hey friends and welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be all about rabbit or like bunny rabbit Easter spring DIYs. I think you're going to love it. I hope you love it. There's lots of DIYs. I don't know how many. I didn't count. Maybe I'll count by the time I put out this video. <laughs> Anyways, let's just get on to the video. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. Breaking into today's video because I wanted to share. I'm not even breaking in. It's the beginning of the video. But I wanted to share that this video is part of a playlist. It is called the Open Collab Just Craft Easter themed playlist and the hosts are DIY with Aria, Lolly D's Creation, the guest hosts are Miguelitos DIY and CJ DIY. I'm gonna have a link to their channels in the description box below. Also, I feel like I need to clean my glasses because they're like really dirty right now. But anyway, check it out. Playlist is down below as well. Give them thumbs up, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe support the channels, comments, all the things. You know, it helps us out and the content creators on YouTube really appreciate it. Me included. So anyway, back to the video. Y'all, we're gonna kick off this video with a super easy paper bag bunny garland. I have these three wood shapes. I probably got them from Dollar Tree, possibly Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something, but I'm just painting them white. Simple and easy to do. Next, I have some pinking shears. You can get these in the sewing section of like Hobby Lobby or maybe at Michael's as well. And I just cut the edge of the paper bag because I thought it'd just be fun instead of it's just a straight edge. Let's kind of zhuzh it up a little bit. And then I'm going to hot glue the bunnies on. And as you can tell, I kind of used my distressing ink to give a little bit of dimension to each of the bunnies. And then the way that you hang it is you string it up behind the flap and it just hangs up just like that. Looks so cute, and I really love how it turned out. Super easy to do, and it doesn't really cost you a whole lot of money. For the next project, I think I found this inspo piece on Etsy. That's where I get a lot of my inspiration from, but all I did was just basically print it out, and I'm using some carbon paper to trace it onto those white tags that you see there. I got those tags from Hobby Lobby. They're in the His and Hers wedding section. This particular product does not go on sale when the His and Hers wedding section's on sale. It just doesn't. So you'll have to pay full price, but I think it ends up being like a dollar a piece for each tag or something like that. It was, it was pretty reasonable. So after you traced on the letters, or the letters, the rabbits, I'm, am I going to show you again? No, we don't need to see that again. After you trace them out, you're going to take a black paint pen or even just some black paint or really any color that you like that goes with your decor and you're going to paint it in. Oh, don't forget, that's your sign to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Basically, again, you're just painting it in and I didn't use paint paint. I just used a paint pen because I wanted it to look a little more rustic, a little more rough. Then I'm taking some Jim Holtz distressing ink in the color black and I'm going around the edges just to distress it up a little bit because I like how it looks. If you don't like how that looks, just skip that step and yours will turn out cute too. This is how they turned out. This is a super cute addition to a vignette or a tear tray because you know I love tear trays and so easy to make. Next project, we're gonna make a front door sign. Now this was just in my carrot video. If you missed my 24 Easter DIY carrot video that I just did, I'll link that up in the corner. But I am staining it with Waverly Wax in the color Antique and I'm using a scrap piece of uh, cloth that's damp and I kind of rubbed it on and wiped it off. Then I'm taking some white paint and I'm kind of sketching on the bunny head. And I'm sure I'm looking at something off to the side because I am not that good to just draw it on my own. <laughs> kind of have to have like a guide for that. And then I'm filling in the shape with that white paint. And then I'm filling in the ear section with pink paint, a little bit of white to kind of give it some dimension. I did write the word high. The H, of course, I'm, I'm 
using the purple color, but the eye for that word is gonna be a carrot. And I'm gonna paint in the carrot orange, just kind of carefully filling it in. And I'll use that greenery at the top. I'm gonna use a couple different colors of green to, you know, hopefully add some dimension to it. And I'm using some different colors of orange and brown to, you know, add the little ridges on the carrot. And I'll go around the letters, or the letter, <laughs> and the carrot to kind of outline it, make it look a little bit more fun and whimsical. Adding some embellishment to that thing, the, uh, the greenery. And then I'm just making three loops and this is how I'm gonna make my bow. And I'm using jute twine to pull it all together. And then I add it to the top. It looks so good. I just, this is really one of my favorite signs that I've ever made. This is an inspo piece that I saw in Hobby Lobby, and I thought, you know, I can do that. And it was, what is that, $8.99? And of course, it's, it's almost always 40% off pretty quickly. So they have these beads at Dollar Tree, and they also had this one kind of pre-made, but it wasn't the same look because I didn't want that wood piece in the middle. So if, if you don't mind, you could just buy that. But... I took a wood round circle and I'm painting it white and I'm painting the beads white too. So I took them off of the string, putting them on the skewer so that I can paint them. I just find it's easier to paint them this way because you can kind of get in all the little grooves and then you can just leave them on the skewer to dry. I haven't really noticed if Dollar Tree has these this year, but in years past, they had these beautiful bunny clings that I just, I just, I don't know why I love this bunny so much, but I do. And so I'm going to use that because it does mimic the inspo piece that I had at Dollar Tree. And I am using Mod Podge to attach, attach it to the wood round and kind of making sure everything's laying flat and captain's helping. Then I'm going to be putting the beads on. And I'm using E6000. And one thing is this E6000 was black. And I've said this before, but I didn't realize that E6000 came in black. I just thought it was all clear. Anyway, it's not. So there you go. So I ended up hot gluing it because I didn't want that black showing through. And one thing that I'd seen Kathy Jo um, from Kathy Jo DIY do was take some jute twine and kind of wrap that around the beads as well to give it something extra to hold on to. So if I make another project similar to this, that's what I would do because I'm just trying to use the heck out of the hot glue to make sure that those stay down. And a couple of them do pop off, unfortunately, but you know, it is what it is. I still think it looks really pretty. I did add a jute twine hanger to the back because I used it to hang over my mantle, but I just love this bunny. In fact, I think you're going to see this again in another DIY a little bit later in the video. This was another piece that I featured in my carrot video. This is how to make a bunny toss game. I had kept this um, box that my vacuum came in. This has been a couple years now, but I kept the box because I was gonna use it to make a bunny toss game. And what you do is, or what I did was take some brown craft paper and I got this from the Dollar Tree. Almost everything that I'm doing today is from the Dollar Tree. So very affordable and and pretty accessible to most people. So I'm covering one side and kind of the part of the other the sides, the front facing thing, I'm making sure it's covered and then I'm trying to go on each side. And then I'm tracing out a bunny and I, I can't remember where I got the inspo piece for this one, but I'm tracing out a bunny and I, I'm not an artist, but you know, I mean, it's turning out okay. And I do take a pair of scissors to cut out the circle where the mouth is and then the circle where the tummy is because that's where you're going to toss the bean bags into. And here's how you make carrot bean bags. You take some orange felt and a bunny shape, a bunny shape, a carrot shape, and then you just trace it out and then you cut it out and you cut two pieces for each bean bag. And I'm just going to, I'm not turning them inside out. I'm just going to glue them just the way they are together. You'll see me hot glue in just a second, but you're going to leave the top open. Oh, I'm also cutting out the little greenery that goes at the top, but you hot glue around. Just don't hot glue the top because you have to have a space to put 
the beans in. I'm using lentils. You can use rice, you can use a lot of different things, but I'm just using lentils and I'm just gonna pour them inside and leave enough room so that I can put the greenery in there, but also hot glue it closed. And you just gotta be careful and kind of finagle it until it, it works like you want it to work. And there you go, easy peasy. And they turn, it just turns out so cute. Now Socks is inspecting my handiwork, but that's how it looks. And so when my nieces and nephew had come over for Easter one year, we used this, or I used this just as a fun little game for them. And it cost me hardly anything <laughs> to, to make this. So very easy and affordable as well. Oh, Captain's gonna take a peek too. Hey friends, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. I wanted to also let you know that I have a crafting group on Facebook. It's called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. The link is gonna be below. Back to the video, bye. Here's the inspo piece from Hobby Lobby that I saw and I thought, you know, those are really cute. And I mean, how hard could be to make? So I just created a little template for myself and I traced it onto a piece of wood. <laughs> And then I take my little jigsaw and I cut that puppy out. Not the puppy, a bunny, but I cut that shape out. See here I am just carefully cutting. Power tools are fun to use. And they're not that hard either. The sad thing about this project is I lost the footage, but I painted them pink. I added a little pom-pom ball for the nose. I added some burlap for the ears and a little heart um, shape wood shape that I just wrote somebody loves you. I mean, it's super simple and easy to make y'all I keep saying that oh this project was in my 24 karat video project But it was but it's a bunny and so I wanted to show you in this video as well because this one's more focused on the bunnies so I Cut out the, or I kind of traced out this bunny shape for myself and then I traced it onto the wood and then I used my jigsaw and I'm cutting out the piece and I'm just using some clamps to kind of hold it down and then I'm getting in the way so you don't really see me cut it out. <laughs> but here's how it looks. And then I painted it white. And I do try to leave just a little bit of an area because I'm going to be um, adding that little crate that you see there to the front and just adding some white paint. But I'm going to stain the, um, oh, I stained the little crate with Waverly Wax and the Color Antique, but I left that back side. You can't see it, but you'll see it right now. Um, or there you go, see it. I, I left that raw wood because I think that raw wood works better with wood glue when it's raw wood to raw wood. So then I set something heavy on it so it would, you know, keep it clamped down. And then I'm putting on the bunny ears just using some pink paint. And you can use whatever colors kind of suit your fancy. And I added a pom-pom nose and I don't really like the pom-pom nose. So I might redo the face, but this is how it looks. And I just put some scrap wood carrots inside the little crate there. And I think it looks super cute. I got these wood slices from the, from Hobby Lobby, but be careful because there's some in the wood pile section, but those never go on sale. So get them in the his and her, her section when they're 40% off. It's a better deal. But Dollar Tree also sells wood slices. And so, yeah, you, you could do that too. But I started to paint it that aqua color. I thought it was a little too dark. So I added some white to it to kind of, you know, brighten it up a little bit. And I'm just using the natural grain of that wood slice to paint a circle. And I literally added just a little bunny shape. I painted it white. You can just leave it plain natural wood. That would look pretty too. And a little gingham bow at the top. How easy, but how stinking cute is this? And it, it looks so good on my tear tray. I love it. Okay, this is a fun one. I am painting this little scrap piece of wood that came from when we had our fence put in or the back part of our fence put in. And I kept all the scrap pieces of wood. And none of the guys thought I was kind of crazy for that, but I'm like, no. First of all, I paid for it. But second of all, I can use that for my DIYs. So I kept all the extra, extra wood that, that came from the fence. And I'm just painting this one white. And I'm cutting out two different bunny shapes here because you'll see that the, the one I'm tracing out right now is for this project here. But the one right next to it is for a project that you'll see in just a little bit as well. But 
cutting it out on that same scrap piece of fencing material and then I'm going to cut it out with my jigsaw. Now there is a color called melted chocolate and I believe that's what I'm using right now and I'm just covering the bunny with that color. Now if you don't have a jigsaw and you're saying to yourself, Lisa, I don't have a jigsaw, um, how can I do that? You actually can make the same idea out of cardboard. And if you want it like thicker, just glue several pieces of cardboard together. Honestly, you're, you're not even going to hardly notice a difference. I happen to have a jigsaw and I enjoy woodworking. So uh, this is how it turned out. This is a chocolate bunny. And on that white piece of, of wood, I just put chocolate bunnies 50 cents. How easy peasy is that? And it looks cute. And I think it looks like a chocolate bunny. What do you think? Okay, so here's that other project that I told you was the other shape that the other shape was for. And I had this little square piece of wood and I'm sure it came from a Dollar Tree sign or something, but I'm just painting it pink. I did cut out a decal that says bunny crossing and um, you could hand letter that on. You could paint that on yourself, but I used my Cricut to, to do that. And then I just hot glued it to this little popsicle stick thing. And that's going to be part of my sign. And I'm using some tower tumbling blocks to help it stand up on its own. Here's me tracing out that bunny shape. And, you know, I get inspo from a lot of different places, but I just think it's fun to kind of create it, but make it my own. You know, I'm painting it white because I'm going to be doing a buffalo check on this bunny. And I wanted my base coat to be white. And I'm just using some washi tape and a little piece of washi tape, washi tape as a spacer and putting my lines across. And then I go the opposite direction and I paint pink. And I do mark where the lines are so that I can put it when I put it back, when I put the original tape back, then I go pink again. So I'll show you some buffalo check in a little bit too, a little bit slower so you can kind of understand the process but I take it all off. Look how pretty that is. And so then I took an aqua color and I'm just adding some more lines to it to give it, you know, I don't know, just more embellishment to it. <laughs> more, I don't know, just to kind of zhuzh it up a little bit. And this is how it turned out. You cannot tell me that this is not stinking cute because it is. And I know it is. <laughs> I love how it turned out. This chalkboard sign I got from Dollar Tree and I'm just using some Waverly Wax on the color antique. It's my favorite stain color, y'all. So y'all should know by that now if you watch my channel, but I'm taking a scrap piece of cloth and I'm painting on the Waverly Wax and then I'm wiping it off with that scrap piece of cloth that's damp. Some people use a baby wipe to do this. I, I, I don't know, I just use a, a scrap piece of cloth. I made a decal with my Cricut that says bunny kisses and Easter wishes. And I'm just applying that to the front of the little chalkboard sign. Then I had two little bunny shapes and they're both facing the same way. So I flip one so that they're kind of facing each other and I'm just painting them pink. And I use an orange paint pen to paint in the carrot and I'll use the green paint pens to color in the greenery at the top of the carrot. Then it's just a matter of gluing this down, glue the carrot down first and then glue a bunny on each side. And I'm just using hot glue to do it. And it stays, you know, well enough for me, but it turns out cute. You'll have to let me know what you think about this one in the comments below. This is a Dollar Tree sign that I'm just going to make over and I'm painting the inside of the sign white. And here's a true crafter issue. I didn't peel off the paper. I just painted over it. I've seen tons of crafters just paint over it and it worked well for them. It didn't work so well for me. It was bubbling up. So I had to remove the paper and then I decided to go a different route and paint this Parisian gray. I made another decal with my Cricut and it says some bunny needs coffee. I'm not even a coffee drinker y'all but I do love a good coffee shop and the smell of a coffee shop. Mm, it just, I don't know. I just really like that. But so I'm painting this bunny white and I'm just going to hot glue that up in that little corner, that little space right there. If I can get it without, there you go, Lisa. And I pop that little um, sign back into the frame and that's how it turned out. 
Super cute, y'all. Super cute and easy to make. Here's a little bunny head that I got from Dollar Tree, and I am staining it with Waverly Wax in the color Antique. Sound like a broken record. Then they had these little flower shapes. Pretty sure I got these from Dollar Tree too, and I'm just painting them with paint pens. And as you can see, I did cut out a bunny face decal with my Cricut, and I kind of had to size it to the bunny head that I've got there. But I add the decal to the bunny and I ended up not using the ears because I thought the face was cute enough. So I just added that decal to the bunny and then I hot glued on that little flower there. And I guess it's a girl bunny. I mean, I guess guys could wear flowers too. <laughs> but that's how it turned out. So stinking cute. And it really is a nice filler on a tear tray. Here's another fast and fairly easy DIY that you can do. They sell these little boxes at Dollar Tree. And it's actually like a little box that goes inside another box, like a cubby or whatever. And they also sell this wired um, jute twine. So I made little bunny ears out of it. And I'm hot gluing that to the top. And since you don't really want to see because it just looks a little messy how, you, how I had to hot glue it up there. I'm just taking some floral picks that I got from Dollar Tree and kind of hot gluing those around to cover up where the ears are attached to the top of the box. And there was a hole in the back that comes in, there's different shapes on that, but I had these jumbo pom-pom balls and I'm just kind of fluffing it up a little bit and I'm going to use that as the little bunny tail. And on the front, I'm just using uh, paint pens to add the eyes. And then, of course, I'm making a little nose with some pink paint. And I'll add the little face, the rest of the face as well. And this is how it turned out. Now, the whiskers, you know, I don't know about the whiskers, but <laughs> I need to work on that. But I think this looks really, really super cute. I took another one of those cubes and I stained it with the Waverly Wax and the color Antique. And I had printed off some kind of vintage and apparently very faded <laughs> looking um, bunny scenes and I mod podged it on and then I just used my little sander to take off the edges and clean up the edges and then I took some distressing ink in the color vintage photo and I'm going all around the edges to kind of distress it up a little bit and I think it's like a Peter Rabbit scene I'm not exactly sure. Maybe Velveteen Rabbit. Who knows? Anyway, it's a little rabbit scene and it looks super cute. And it, you know, again, it's another great tear trade decor piece. All right, here's where I'm going to show you how to make Buffalo check again. And I like my pieces to look a little finished out and I didn't want to mess with the back. So I'm just going to cover it up with craft paper. Well, I guess I am going to try to take that off. I just, you know, a lot of times Dollar Tree's stuff has glitter on it. And I just, you know, not really into that. But if you take a damp cloth, you can um, soak it off and it usually comes off pretty easily. Anyways, I'm gonna paint the base coat is gonna be the white color. And typically you're gonna use three different colors, light, dark, and then darkest. So your base coat's this white one in my case. I use painter painter's tape to mark off my stuff and you just gonna put the line down. I do down the middle first, and then I use a little piece of tape as a spacer, and I put the lines, uh, the rest of the tape to make the lines horizontally first. That's how I do it. Now you could do it either way you want to. You could go vertically or horizontally or, well, I guess that's vertically if the sign was upright. Anyway, you can see what I'm doing here. And then once you get that done, you're gonna take your next darker color and I'm using that pink color and you're going to paint down the middle like that down in between the pieces of tape and just make sure you press your tape down really good because this will help your lines be crisp if it is if, like if you pushed it down good I usually pull it off before it's completely dry and I just let it dry the rest of the way mine's dry <laughs> I must have dried it with my heat tool so now we're going to put the lines going the other way. So this is horizontal. And again, I'm using that piece of tape as a spacer. 
and just adding all the tape from the top to the bottom of the sign. If you're like me, this is an important step that you really want to try not to miss, but you're going to go in and mark where the other tape was, the previous tape. You only have to do it on one line and just make sure when you paint with that second color again, cause you're going the opposite direction with the second color, just make sure you don't cover up <laughs> the piece of tape that you marked because you're going to put those original pieces of tape back down and where you marked it is going to help you make sure that you lay it in the proper space. And this will help your Buffalo check come out nice and crisp and not be all wonky looking. Once you get all that original tape back in place, you're going to go back in with your darkest color. I'm using Parisian gray. So it's not really like necessarily a darker color. It's just more like a third color. And before it dries, I peel it all off because I don't want this like sticking to each other and sticking down. I just don't want that to happen. So I pull it all off and look just how beautiful this turns out. It is not hard to do at all. And you can really customize the colors to just any, any colors that your decor has. So I'm going to put a bunny in the middle and I'm using this wired um, greenery with the help of captain and socks. And I'm painting the bunny. I believe I'm painting it Parisian. Yeah. I'm painting it Parisian gray. Oh, now I'm going to change my mind. Go on in with the black. And I'm going to outline it with a white paint pen. This is how it turns out. And yes, y'all, I know that the gray brine wreath looks dead. <laughs> it has, I need to add some greenery to it because it's just really, I need to zhuzh that up. But this is how the little buffalo check with the bunny in the middle turned out. I think it turned out so cute. You remember that bunny decal from earlier? Well, here it is again. Now I like to remove the stickers from all my stuff. I know some people don't, especially if it's going to be covered up or you're not going to see it. I just, I don't know. I just like to take off the, all the stickers and stuff, but this is a charger plate from Dollar Tree and I'm going to spray paint it with Rust-Oleum's chalked ultra matte spray paint in the color chiffon. I think that color is, and I'm going to take some Mod Podge and go, I'm going over the entire plate because I'm going to be adding the, the decal plus some eggs off the decal as well not just the bunny. You lay the bunny down, kind of get it where it needs to go. I just, I don't know what it is about this bunny, but I, I love the flowers in the hair. I love the color of the bunny. I just think it's so pretty. I do give it a good coat of Mod Podge because the decal is a little shinier than the paint on the charger plate. And so I want it to blend in better. And I'm also adding some eggs just kind of on either side of the bunny, just cause that's, I thought it looked cute. I think I, I must have seen an inspo piece or something somewhere, but um, I'm just, I'm already loving it. I just love this piece and look how it turned out. Oh, I, I need to, I feel like I need to add some more eggs around the bunny, but I, I just think it looks really super cute. We're going to be making a planter and I got this piece from Dollar Tree. And as you can see, I'm just staining it with Waverly Wax and the color Antique. And obviously there's other projects going on in the background that also got stained at the same time. But I'm also wearing gloves because sometimes that stain will get on my nails and I get my nails done and I don't want to ruin my manicure. So sometimes I wear gloves. Now this scrapping, scrapping book, scrapbook or craft paper, it's from Hobby Lobby and it has little bunnies on it. And these bunny heads are from Dollar Tree. Now, I don't know if they have them this year because I haven't really shopped that much this year. I've been trying to really use my stash. But again, I'm taking off those, <laughs> uh, the stickers because I just don't like the stickers on y'all. And then I'm tracing out the bunny heads because I'm going to be Mod Podging this scrapbook paper onto those bunny heads. I'm taking the sticker off the bottom of the little box that I'm using. And I know that they still sell those boxes because I just saw them the other day at Dollar Tree. But, oh, I guess I didn't Mod Podge them on. I just used glue. That's weird. I usually Mod Podge. <laughs> but, um, I'm just adding the little scrapbook paper that I cut out to the front. And then I am going to use my finger sander to clean off the edges. 
when you use that finger sander, it just, you can use an emery board, just a regular piece of sandpaper to do this, but just kind of go around the edges in a downward motion and it really cleans up those, um, the edges of the paper. So as you can see here, maybe you didn't see, but I stained that box with Waverly Wax and the color antique. And now I'm just going to be attaching the bunny heads all the way around the box because I'm making like a little planter box. And I am just going to be hot gluing. I would have preferred if I'd used like a stronger glue because I feel like sometimes the hot glue just pops off. Maybe I'm using the wrong kind of hot glue, but I'm using the Gorilla Glue, so I'm not exactly sure. But you're just going to hot glue those bunny heads all the way around. And I had some floral foam on hand that I got from Dollar Tree, and so I'm just adding in some Dollar Tree picks. I think they're pretty. And just kind of making a little floral arrangement. And this is how it turned out. I, you can change out the floral picks for whatever suits your fancy, but I think it turned out cute. For this project, I cut out some little, they're almost like a peep shape <laughs> of a bunny, but I am just staining them with Waverly Wax on the color antique. I sound like a broken record, but it is literally my favorite stain. All right, I'm not sure where I got this little pom-pom garland from, but I'm gonna use that as my little bunny tail. Oh wait, no, changed my mind. I'm using a bead. And I got these beads from the Dollar Tree. Super cute, however, and this is all I do to it. But the only thing I'll say is those beads do not stay on. They did not stay on, so word to the wise. But it looks cute. I'm making a book stack. I love little book stacks. I just think they're so cute. I love making them and I mean, almost a lot of my videos you'll see me making a book stack. And this video is no exception. So I'm staining those scrap pieces of wood that I had on hand. I'm staining them with Waverly Wax in the color antique. I paint on and then wipe off with a scrap piece of cloth. You can hand letter this on, but I used my Cricut and I cut out the words somebody bunny and then heart loves you. Oh no, somebody to love. Somebody to love me. No, that's not even a song. Anyway, I am hot gluing the book stack together. I don't normally do this, but I don't know why I did it for this one. Just wind some jute twine around a few times, add a little jute twine bow at the top, and you've got a super cute little book stack. I was about to say I'm cutting out another piece, but I'm lying. That's Marvin's leg. That's not me. That's Marvin cutting that out for me. <laughs> but anyway, I traced out this bunny head onto a piece of wood. And now, um, and Marvin cut it out for me. Thank you, honey. And now I'm just painting it white. And I take some of that pink paint to kind of shade in the ears. And I don't always tell you the name of the paint because I don't know that it's always like, like necessary because I think just use a pink color you like. You know, I mean, maybe you want to use the exact same one I use. I don't know. But then I'm trying to figure out where like the bunny nose is going to go and like where the eyes will go. And, um, and I'm putting on a little bit of pink for the cheeks of the bunny. And I'm using a black paint pen to add on the eyes. Well, eyes are a little close together. And I'm taking a little bead, wooden bead, and I'm painting it pink because that's going to be the nose. I do add on some whiskers, but whiskers, I don't know. I still don't feel super comfortable with how I create my bunny faces, but you know, it's a work in progress. Then I'm hot gluing the nose to it and it turns out cute y'all. I really like how it turns out. This little ceramic bunny shape came from Dollar Tree and I'm just giving a coat of white paint. This glass jar is from something that we ate. By the shape of it, I think it's this spaghetti sauce that I get from the farmer's market that we have. <laughs> so um, anyway, I'm reusing and repurposing something that would ordinarily be recycled or trash. I am adding a little bit of pink to the bunny ears, but I'm not really going to do too much to the bunny. I mean, I'm adding a little dot for the eye and stuff, but I'm not like really painting on the face <laughs> necessarily. I wanted to paint on some stripes. So I'm using my painter's tape and a little 
piece of the painter's tape as a spacer and I'm going all the way around the um, jar. And after I made sure that I mashed down that painter's tape really well so that it wouldn't bleed underneath it, I took the pink paint and I just painted on the stripes. And I'm gonna use E6000 to adhere the bunny to that the top of the lid. I wasn't gonna trust it really to hot glue. Oh, never mind. I am gonna trust it. But at least, it, I know, I was using the hot glue for an immediate hold and the E6000 to last longer. That's what it was. And I'm putting that little guy on there. And I'm taking some moss. And this stuff is just really messy. And it also kind of smells a little bit, to be honest. But I'm using that to cover up where I glued the bunny to the, um, the lid. And then just kind of trimming it off. That's how it turned out. I used a little bit of jute twine to go around the, the little um, top of the jar. I love it. I think it's so cute. It's simple, but just, it's super cute. Thank y'all so much for joining me for today's video. I really do appreciate the company in my craft space as I craft and create. And tell me which one is your favorite. Don't forget playlist, host and guest host description is in the description box above the links to all that. And my crafting group on Facebook. Also, if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or over on TikTok or on Instagram or Facebook, <laughs> my handle is Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. Bye!